Philip Alstein. I'm chief game designer at Google and uh, happy to be your MC for the day. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the Google Developer Day at GDC uh, 2017. Boy, it's just amazing. GDC has grown literally a thousand fold since the first one that was held 30 years ago in Chris Crawford's house. And uh, it wasn't at that one, I've been at every one ever since. And the first one I went to, we had the entire conference was about a third the size of this room. So it's just great to see what's happening. So we're really happy to be kicking it off uh, this year. This industry, thank you, and our involvement in it uh, has grown because of the contributions of developers like you. And um, you may not think of Google as a gaming company, but the fact is our platforms, our tools, the store support, uh, it's just an amazing variety of, of game development efforts that uh, we have behind you. And we're going to give you an idea of just how all that stuff works at today's event. So, and I should hit the right button here. Sorry. Um, so we're going to start off uh, today with our keynote speeches uh, that will include speakers from Google Play. And from there, we're going to launch into a series of five-minute lightning talks from a range of teams with a lot of really fun stuff I'm looking forward to uh, sharing with you. We're going to have some Q&A with our speakers after that, and then we have a break for lunch. Uh, after lunch, it's time for three really interesting and relevant panels that feature some of our gaming partners. And we're going to start with a panel about launching on the Play Store. Follow that with one about building uh, communities, and finally, a discussion on lessons learned by indie developers. But before we jump into all of that, let me recap a bit about what a memorable year 2016 has been for us. There were some great hits, like the phenomenon that was Pokemon Go. And then there were the popular games like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Clash Royale, both of which were built with novel ways to keep users engaged and coming back for more. We've also had a lot of our own launches as well, with Google entering the hardware space. While Google Home makes for a great living room assistant, the Pixel phone shows our commitment to building a high quality, beautifully designed device inside and out. We were really gratified to hear CNET say just last month, the Google Pixel remains our favorite phone, bar none. Combined with Android N's game-friendly sustained performance mode and the integration of the Vulkan API, it makes for a really formidable and useful platform for your games. The Pixel phone was also the first Daydream-ready device. And with the addition of our very affordable Daydream View and its controller, players can now immerse themselves in fun and innovative VR experiences. We've also released the first Tango AR phone. And when GDC's floor opens on Wednesday, uh, you're going to be able to try out both Daydream and Tango at our booth there. We're excited with the games that we've released so far, but we're really looking forward and eager to play the other great titles that a lot of you are working on right now. You're also going to hear more about the ways that Google's teams are uh, supporting your games throughout the full life cycle. Our Firebase tools and infrastructures, for example, give you access to real-time analytics, push notifications, storage, and ads across a variety of language, languages. And today, we're really excited to announce that Firebase is completely available on mobile for C++ and Unity developers at this point. Uh, Google Cloud Platform also makes building multiplayer games uh, very easy. And when you need to scale with the rocket ride of a game like Pokemon Go, that's very important. Uh, by the way, the, the Cloud uh, Platform has their own expo uh, floor space as well. Once your game has been launched, our AdWords service uh, grows your audience directly using machine learning to target players directly in their searches. And then the power of YouTube kicks in, supercharging the growth of mobile gaming. So all of these and more are going to be covered in our lightning talks. But none of this would have happened without developers like you. We have spent a lot of time over the last year reaching out to our developers and the whole community, listening to your feedback, and bringing that back in-house to improve our platform and tools. So let me urge you to continue that by taking this opportunity today and talking with some of the many Googlers who are here in the audience uh, and who have been involved in supporting game developers. Uh, Googlers, can you, you raise your hands and wave? So we got quite a few up here. Uh, people will be around most of the day. And please have a chance to talk to them. Thanks very much. But now on to Paul, who's our product lead for the Play Store, to share a bit more with you from how we're helping people find better games and uh, more engaged users. Thank you.
Thanks, Noah. Hi, everyone. As Noah mentioned, I, looked after, I look after the Google Play Store. And uh, I'm here to share an update into how we think about games, as well as a sneak peek into some features that we're developing. I started playing games as a kid on an 8088 PC, but I had to be careful not to get caught by my parents, because they thought computers were only for WordPerfect, Quicken, and Lotus 1, 2, 3. As a teenager, I used to sneak into my dad's office with my friends to play Warcraft and Starcraft. Now, I know gaming has come a long way since then with the mobile revolution, and I feel really lucky to be part of the team at Google Play that helps users discover great games. Now, don't worry, because my kids, I've got four of them, play a lot of Minecraft and a lot of uh, Kingdom Rush with me, so you can rest assured the next generation is being raised properly. Android has been the world's largest mobile gaming platform for a long time, and it's still growing, especially in emerging markets. Last year, we added over 300 million users in countries like Brazil, India, and Indonesia. In addition to helping you reach over the, the, you know, the billion plus users that are on Android, we also want to help you build your business. So we've been adding more forms of payment for more users in more countries and simplifying the payment flow. Last year, over 100 million users gained access to a new form of payment on Google Play. And users in 136 countries can buy your virtual goods and your games on the Play platform. I mentioned the user growth in emerging markets, but we're also seeing great growth in consumer spend in those markets at over 70% last year. So there's a lot of momentum and a lot of future growth ahead for the ecosystem. Now, Android isn't just about being the largest mobile gaming platform. We also want to deliver the highest quality user experience. When we built the Pixel Phone and the Daydream VR set, we designed the full hardware and software stack ourselves. And this allowed us to focus on important details like battery life, camera quality, and UI consistency. The response has been fantastic, and we're really proud of the quality built into each of these products. And we don't just keep the improvements for ourselves. Android N is open source, and it's the best mobile operating system we've ever built. This year, Google is still investing heavily in performance and polish for Android, and we look forward to sharing more details with you later this year when we announce Android O. The Play Store team has been laser focused on improving the quality of the user experience, both within the store and within the apps and games that are downloaded from Play. About a billion users um, come to the Play Store every month to learn about apps and games, and so we run hundreds of experiments to optimize their experience. Optimize the store for us has meant growing downloads by putting the right game in front of the right user in the right context. And this is still true, but we're rethinking what right game and right context means. We don't really think a user should have to download 20 games before finding one that she really likes. And so this year, we've begun tuning our algorithms to optimize for user engagement, not just downloads. So for example, a title that gets a whole bunch of downloads because it has a catchy icon, but is then quickly uninstalled, will receive less prominence than a title that drives true user engagement and retention. We're also working on several features to improve the prominence and conversion for premium games. A lot of these are really high quality, but they have to overcome this extra hurdle of upfront payment. The first of these features we're announcing today, and we're calling it Strike Through Pricing. You can use Strike Through Pricing to run a price promotion on a premium app or game in the Google Play Store. Promotions drive awareness, conversion, and a sense of value for our users. Here's how it works. Any of you can log into the developer console today and set up a promotion on your game. You just tell us what discount you want to apply, when you want to apply it, and we do the rest. Users will see the original and discounted price on the home page, in the search results, and in the app listing page. In our early pilot phase, developers saw a lift in installs ranging from 3x to 20x when running a promotion on their game. Many of the developers saw a sustained uplift in performance even after the discount had ended. So we're really excited about the, the progress so far. Now, Obviously, there's a correlation between the size, of the, 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 the size of the discount and the level of marketing spend that you do and the size of the uplift. But across the board, results have been really encouraging. And we'd like to see more of you using this feature soon. And throughout the year, you'll see additional features uh, meant to drive more prominence conversion for premium games 
as we work to create a healthy ecosystem of developers, players, and payers. Another way we'll be highlighting quality games on Android is through our new editorial pages, which are launching in Q2. These pages allow play editors to showcase magical, high-performing Android games. You can think of them as a handcrafted page built around a theme. In this example, we've made a page for role-playing games. Up top, we show an introduction to the genre, followed by a short list of titles that have earned our love, along with the reasons why we picked them. Now I'm going to give you a sneak peek into some, pre, uh, some features that are a little bit earlier in the development cycle. I mentioned our shift to reward deep engagement over discarded downloads. One way to do this is to drive more qualified traffic to our developers. Today I might have to download a 50 or 100 megabyte game before really figuring out what it does and whether I like it. And we'd like to help users learn more about the game before the download. One way we're doing this is exposing users to more of your gameplay earlier in the funnel through inline videos. These videos will show up on the game's homepage of the store. And in, in addition to the usual icons, users will be able to browse a set of videos for games that we think they will really like. We're doing a similar test for screenshots inline, which will show up in the search results and in the homepage. These features are designed to simplify the search and discovery experience by giving users a preview of what they're going to experience without requiring them to visit a whole separate page. And we think this will be really helpful for the hundreds of millions of users who are coming online with slower connections. Now, finally, we want to help developers like you drive repeat engagement with your Android games. Many of you have spent a lot of money acquiring users, and sometimes these users need a little nudge to come back. So we're going to be testing live ops cards in the store, which give developers a channel to drive awareness of in-game activities and events. These cards will show up on the home pages of the store and also in the My Apps section of the store, where users are already coming to manage app updates. It's a super early phase of the project right now, but we're sharing it with you because we think it's an important part of driving engagement and stickiness with Android games. So that's about it for me today. I hope each of you are a little bit more convinced that Google is serious about supporting the quality of the Android gaming experience, from our hardware to the operating system, from our developer tools to the Play Store. Now, we know that in order to keep our users happy, we, have, we depend on developers like you to keep creating incredible gaming experiences. So I'd like to introduce Jamil Moladina, our game strategic lead, who will announce a set of exciting titles coming to the platform. Thank you, Paul. Hi, everyone. It's a thrill to be back on the GDC stage. Between working on GDC and coming to Google, I converted my love of games into actually making games and learned just how hard this really is. Yet, this is a truly extraordinary time for mobile games, and it's why I'm excited to be here. Supercell's Clash Royale showed that you can finally bring a synchronous multiplayer game to mobile and have it become a hit. Lineage 2 from Netmarble and NCSoft stormed our charts in Korea as a full-fledged mobile MMO. Plus, the biggest fan communities in the world are finding games made for them on mobile, too. Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes from EA and Lucasfilm let us collect virtual action figures and battle them like we did with the plastic ones when we were kids. And mobile players rewarded that effort. Nintendo came to mobile with Super Mario Run and Fire Emblem Heroes, setting records for pre-registration on Google Play. And handcrafted art and innovation are also thriving in finding an audience on mobile, where you can card swipe managing your kingdom in reigns from Nariel and Devolver, or make life-changing decisions through the chaos of a real-world regime change, as in Revolution 1979 from Ink Stories. All of this depth, community, and diversity of play was what we saw and supported just in the past year. What we're seeing com coming up doubles down on those trends, and we're excited to bring some of our game dev partners on stage today to share what they've got going on. We'll highlight an existing hits evolution, 
share some big new games, and close with some breakthrough titles on new technology. So let's get started. Today, February 27th, is a very important birthday in games, in that Pokemon is 21 years old. Exactly. <laughs> Pokemon Go, the hit augmented reality game from Niantic, driven by Google Maps and Google Cloud, got people across the globe off the couch and out catching Pokemon. Fans were screaming for more, and here to give us a little of what we want is Phil Keslin from Niantic. Thanks, Jamil, and good morning. Um, I'm Phil Kesslin. I'm the CTO for Niantic. Um, most people don't know, or everybody knows that we're the Pokemon Go people, but what most people don't know is that uh, we actually started inside Google about six years ago um, as an independent organization uh, with, a, with a mission of creating adventures on foot with others. Um, that mission was, was set out to foster exploration and discovery in the real world. Um, the first app we launched is called Field Trip. It's a serendipitous location-based discovery uh, application. Uh, the idea was to give you information about the location that you're currently standing in, such as in the financial district. Most people don't know that buried beneath the uh, buildings are uh, hundreds of ships uh, that were dragged on, on, um, into the landfill. Um, that, that title was launched in uh, 2012 and we follow closely um, with Ingress, uh, which is our, our true location-based MMO. Uh, it's a territory capture game, and uh, in the four years that since its launch, it's been downloaded about 20 million times, and it's still going strong today. Um, its user base is, is quite sticky. Um, in, and most of you may remember, in April, April Fool's joke at Google on, uh, in 2014, uh, the Google Maps was littered with Pokemon. And uh, the success of that April Fool's joke sort of spawned an idea. And that idea was build a real world location-based MMO based on Pokemon. We approached the Pokemon company with that idea. They in turn played Ingress a little bit and discovered that this, this actually has a, a great deal of, of legs to it. So together with the Pokemon company, we built and launched uh, the, the Pokemon Go game. Uh, we started with a small team of engineers. As there were nine engineers on the team that built that product, five designers and two producers. Um, and as many of you are aware, uh, we were just a little bit overwhelmed with uh, the response. Um, it was about 50 times what we originally anticipated. Um, and yeah, that summer was quite, quite a wild ride, actually yeah, the 30 days, uh, with, with absolutely no pressure at all. Um, except for maybe the 9,000 people in San Francisco who proposed marching on our offices um, if we couldn't get the servers back up before the Market Street crawl the Friday after we launched in the United States. Um, since we've launched, we've stabilized everything. Um, we've added some incremental changes, but last week we launched the biggest update thus far. And let's uh, watch the video. So with this update, uh, we've added the second generation of Pokemon, those Pokemon from the Gold and Silver Series games. Um, additionally, we changed the encounter mechanics to uh, making capturing Pokemon a bit more challenging. And we've added cut, uh, avatar customization to the title as well. Since we've launched, uh, we've had about a little over 650 million installs um, of the application, and our players are active, active too. Uh, they've walked about 8.7 billion kilometers which is just shy of Pluto. Um, <clears throat> Ingress and Pokemon Go, as you might imagine, have some pretty distinct technical challenges. Uh, this is a single world MMO. Uh, we're building a planet scale game with demanding latency and consistency requirements. 
and is capable of supporting millions of simultaneous users, and that is no easy task. Uh, luckily, we've had the support of uh, both the Google Cloud and Google Play Store teams, um, and having those 40 or so faces during the launch on the other side of the Hangout was, was very, very reassuring to the four engineers that were trying to bring that server up. <clears throat> when we started Niantic, we wanted to get people outside, off the couch, playing games uh, with one another. Uh, with Ingress, and especially Pokemon Go, we saw this happen. Of all that we achieved last year, it was the smiles, and the thing that put the smiles on our faces were the people getting outside, seeing the teenagers running around the neighborhood, playing games with one another. Um, and that is what motivated us to push through the, uh, the tough times and uh, get a pretty uh, fun game into people's hands. Um, both Ingress and Pokemon Go, they're not static titles. We're going to continue to evolve those over time. And at launch, our gameplay for Pokemon Go was focused on the adventures on foot part of our mission. This year, we're going to add more and more um, of the with others portion of that by adding social and collaborative gameplay to the title as well. And we at Niantic look forward to sharing that with you, along with maybe one or two other surprises. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Pokemon Go is having a great ride, and we're excited to see the game continue to evolve with these great new characters and upcoming features. Now, we'd like to share with you a trio of brand new games about to launch on Google Play. Kabam is an established partner on our store, making hit games well-tuned to the mobile marketplace. Recently, they've been showing some of their console DNA and love for all genres of games. Their latest game combines 3D fighter, RPG, and base building in a console quality game around a brand whose community is ready to roll out. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Howell and Mike McCartney from Kabam. Thanks, Jamil. We're really excited to be here and show off Kabam's uh, next free-to-play, AAA quality uh, game, Transformers Forge to Fight. Forge to Fight is the first game to feature the entire history of the Transformers franchise. Uh, so whether you're a fan of the classic Generations characters, characters from the Transformers movies, or even the Maximals and Predacons from the Beast Wars series, our game has you covered. Featuring intense one versus one combat, deep strategic RPG systems, and engaging social gameplay. As commander, you'll partner with Optimus Prime to establish a base and defend it with a collection of your favorite Transformers. So let's dig into that part of the game right now. So last night, while I was asleep, my friend overseas raided my base. And I found out when I woke up, and I was really aggravated, and uh, all I could think about was exacting some revenge. So why don't we go and finish off the job and take out his boss and his base. So for Transformers, it was really important for us that we push the limits on visuals and really change people's expectations of what is possible on a mobile platform. To accomplish this feat, we had to build a brand new rendering engine from the ground up we call Ember. Ember combines physically based rendering and a deferred lighting model to fill do a full dynamically lit environment and really brings our robots to life. Devices like the Google Pixel, like Mike is playing on right now, have an incredible amount of rendering horsepower, and Ember can extract all that power to bring this console quality level of graphics to mobile. On top of just rendering, we've developed a brand new GPU-based uh, physics engine. By using multiple render targets and, 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 and keeping the physics state in uh, texture format, we can calculate and simulate collisions for over 50,000 particles all in real time all rendered in beautiful HDR, and we even can draw them all in a single draw call. Mike, for fun, let's show the power of the Google Pixel and turn on ludicrous mode for our, for our uh, sparks. All right, if you're sure. Here we go. All right, it's time to show what uh, real transformation is about. Let's finish off Optimus Prime.
Without the power of the Google Pixel, these high fidelity graphics and silky smooth performance would not be possible. Thanks to Google, my revenge is complete. Transformers Forge to Fight is beta in select territories right now. And today we're announcing for the first time that the game will be available globally on April 5th, 2017. Go pre-register on Google Play now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. You know, that is really fun to play as well. They've definitely cracked input for high fidelity games. Now, finding that balance between classic game design and mobile play can be very complex. The next game is from one of the leaders in the AAA console space, and they've truly taken this concept to heart. What you're going to see is a game made first for mobile in accessibility and design. But for the gamer in all of us, especially for those of us who grew up in the 80s. I'm very pleased to introduce to the stage Donald Mustard from Epic Games. Thanks, Jamil. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for having us here today. We could not be more excited to be with you at GDC to announce a brand new game from Epic, powered, of course, by Unreal Engine 4. Now, we all know Unreal Engine is synonymous with making AAA high-fidelity experiences for all gaming platforms. Its versatility, combined with the power of devices like the Google Pixel, are what allowed us to design and create the game we're about to show you. I am so thrilled to present Battle Breakers. All right, so Battle Breakers was born from us saying, what if we took our love for zany 80s Saturday morning cartoons and combined that with our obsession with tactical turn-based RPGs? And so, in my best announcer voice, your world was at peace when monsters from space attacked, trapping your world and its heroes in techno magic crystal. So that's the setup, right? All right, so this game is all about your heroes and your team. So this is my team right now. And there's over 250 heroes in the game at launch. So for this demo, I'm going to augment my team a little bit, and I'm going to check out Stormbringer. She's awesome because she has this hurricane blade attack that will be perfect for what I'm about to show you. So I'm going to add her to my team and enter one of the game's over 600 levels. I'm also going to add one of my real-world friends to the team because they have this awesome character named Razor, and she's amazing, and I want her on my team. So all my characters are now getting added into the level. Let me tell you a little bit how the game works. So the game is based on these very poppable crystal tiles that you pop and break to find different things. You can find everything from gold and treasure to crafting materials and all sorts of different kind of loot. You'll also find enemies. And you need to use your heroes and your team to take these guys out. We use a pretty dynamic uh, rock, paper, scissors system, right? So red is best at green, green is best at blue, and so on and so forth. Each hero also has a really unique special ability, like this one that clears the board and lets me move to the next, to the next stage. All right, so that's a big looking crystal, which probably means boss fight, right? So the unholy summoner is a big bad that my team needs to take out. But my guys look awesome, we can handle this. I'm gonna do my favorite feature now, which I'm gonna accelerate the game's speed and put it into auto mode. So now I can just sit back and watch the beautiful graphics as my team takes this guy out. Now, this game is actually completely 3D. So we're using Unreal to layer on all this cool 2D art over a 3D world, which allows us to get these very unique effect, uh, effects and transitions that you're seeing. All right, the boss is dead. Let's collect our loot and get out of here. So I'm now able to unlock a permanent uh, upgrade stat and open up all my loot. Awesomely, I was able to get a hero crystal. So now let's open that and see what we find. So all the heroes are trapped in these crystals. And I'm going to pop it open and see what we get, which is Kaldin. This is awesome. This is one of the most rare heroes in the game. And he's awesome because he can transform into an awesome dragon warrior. <laughs> All right, that's Battle Breakers. So at Epic, we love playing games. And we love the technology that makes games. But most of all, we love making games. And we love making them for players all over this world. And I cannot wait 
for you to get this game in your hands. Uh, Battle Breakers is available worldwide very, very soon. But you can actually pre-register for the game starting right now. Uh, and all those who pre-register will receive an exclusive and special Dark Beast Man when the game launches. So go check it all out at battlebreakers.com. Thanks so much. That was awesome, Donald. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, serious question. Who's planning to play hooky from GDC and go see Lego Batman instead? Show of hands. Come on, don't be shy. You've had enough of this show already. Um, I have to admit, doing something similar at Casual Connect when The Dark Knight Rises came out. I bring this up to point out how comic book heroes are really front and center in the public consciousness. In film, television, and of course games. Players on the go want to be Batman as much as the console player in the living room. To help bring that wish to life are our friends at DC and Warner Brothers. Let's welcome Aaron Piepergertis from Warner Brothers NetherRealm Studio. Thank you, Jamil. You guys, I couldn't be more excited to be here today to give you a quick look at Injustice 2. Let's dive right into the action here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is, of course, the sequel to Injustice Gods Among Us, and one of the things you guys are going to see when we get into the action here is the hyper-realistic level of detail that we've been able to achieve. Let's take a look. Now as we start the fight here, again, notice that level of detail that I mentioned. This is perfectly suited to these iconic DC characters like Batman and Harley Quinn. So how did we achieve such a visually stunning game? I know there's a lot of developers in the audience today, so we wanted to give you a little bit of insight into our process. Unreal Engine 4 natively provides us with device profiles, which we can use to adjust graphic settings like shadow resolution and bloom on a per device basis. Now we've actually hosted this on our online backend so we can make real time adjustments. All of this is very useful when you have a tendency to design some pretty over the top moves like this. Superman is not messing around. Now, Injustice 2 is going to be a very full-featured game when it comes out. There's a lot of variety of modes that the, the players can experience and a lot of things they can do in this game. One of the things that we want to actually highlight today is what we're calling our gear system. So we'll take a look at this in action. So gear you guys can think of as customizable costume pieces that you collect as you play the game and equip to your characters. Here we're looking at the base level version of Batman. Notice below him, he's got his pieces of gear. As you collect these and equip them to your character, not only does it change the visual appearance, but it also changes how the character plays. It changes his base stats and abilities. So here we've added all five pieces, and notice again, the very different version of the evolved Predator Batman now. So you see the visual difference, but there are also gameplay implications here as well. So let's take a look at a couple other examples. This time we'll take a look at uh, Wonder Woman. So here, the base version of Wonder Woman. And again, as you play the game, you collect the gear pieces. You've got the head piece, the chest piece, the arms, legs, and her shield, her accessory. Once you've got them all, you can achieve set bonuses, different stats, really upgrading and making this character much, much more powerful. And finally, making his debut here at GDC, of course, is Scarecrow. The idea here is the same. You're going to collect all your gear and equip it, and at this time, you have a very different looking Scarecrow. Our artists had a lot of fun making up a different looks for these iconic characters. Now, let's see this in action. We're going to take a quick look at a second fight. This time with the evolved versions of these characters. You'll see they're much more powerful than what we just saw. Now the visuals are not the only thing that got an upgrade in Injustice 2. Combat is also much deeper this time around. You'll see you can do things like low attacks, high attacks. You can actually dash back away from your opponent and throw projectiles. And with time and practice, players can actually string these different moves together to form oh, some pretty cool this. combos. Now, of course, in addition to the basic attacks, all the characters also have special moves that they can utilize with really cool custom animations, effects. And 
again, as they fight back and forth, notice that detail we've been able to achieve, as I mentioned. Now, you guys want to see one more super move before we go? Alright, making its debut here at GDC for the first time. This is Scarecrow's super move. Injustice 2 is the culmination of a lot of very talented people's efforts back in Chicago. We couldn't be more excited to be bringing this game to you. Look for it to launch worldwide in May, and you can pre-register starting today. Thank you very much. That's just incredible. And it's the same game that's launching on console at the same time. Congratulations. At Google Play, we're proud of these games that respect and deliver for the communities that love these brands. Visit the Play Store right now as we're doing a special update for GDC where you can pre-register the three titles you've just seen. Another important part of Android is VR. Just a few months ago, we launched Daydream with a portfolio that delivers low friction VR with appealing, accessible, and engaging experiences. To continue growing the Daydream platform, we, recent, we recently announced partnerships with Huawei, Asus, and ZTE for new Daydream-ready phones and headsets, with many more partners coming soon. Today, we'd like to announce two new Daydream games that help show that momentum. First up is a great partner of ours and supporter of innovation on multiple platforms. From Ubisoft Montpellier, please welcome Loïc Gounon and Fred Mizak. Thanks, Jamil. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ubisoft, as you know, has always been among the first when, it's, when it comes to innovative platforms, and we are proud today to showcase what Daydream is capable of by bringing new kind of emotions to our players. We, at Ubisoft Montpellier, are excited to present to you a funny and immersive experience from the original creators of The Raving Rabbit. This new game is called Virtual Rabbit, The Big Plan. And now, let's take a look at the game. In this experience you see on the screen, you will use the remote as a chameleon and use its tongue to catch objects. But a rabbit is going to get in your way. And during an operation, you will have to tell the rabbit by shaking your head if you want the object back in your body or not. So you probably want to keep your heart. That, that's a nice image. <laughs> so for the very first time, player will be interacting directly with the rabbits. You can get up closer to them than ever before, and your action will have an impact on what's going on around you, creating hilarious situations. Working with Google on the Daydream platform is great because it allows us to deliver high-quality games in a mobile VR environment. Daydream also brings a great way to interact with the virtual world thanks to the controller. It is light, it is simple to use, and brings lots of new gameplay ideas. We are eager to have you try out our game at the Google Daydream booth starting Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you guys. That was a great example of interacting with characters made much more real in VR. Now, a lot of you know that indies are very near and dear to our hearts. They risk everything for innovation and expression and bring a rich diversity of delight to everyone on their platform of choice. We work hard to make sure that indies have a home on Google Play too. 
Last year, on this stage, we announced the Indie Corner. This dedicated page on, play, on the Play Store highlights fresh new launches as well as proven indie masterpieces. We're excited to see the program continue to grow after featuring over 250 games and driving millions of installs in its first year. And we were just getting started with that. Since then, we've tested new ways to discover and support indies by hosting our first indie game festivals and contests for developers across the world uh, in Seoul, San Francisco, and two weeks ago in London. Keep your eyes open for more efforts like these throughout the year. Now, we're committed to helping indies grow on Android and Google Play. The dedication and passion you have is incredible, and we thank you for your commitment. Given this instinct to innovate, indies are frequently the first to experiment and find new ways to bring new ideas to new platforms. And they're willing to open perspectives through empathy. It's then with a special pleasure to share and reveal a game that hits all of our hot buttons, including social and persistence. From our friends at Spry Fox, please join me in welcoming Daniel Cook. Hello, everyone. Um, so Spry Fox has been making little tiny games for years. Um, Triple Town, Alpha Bear, Realm of the Mad God, Bushido Bear. Last June, we started thinking about our very first VR game. We had a couple goals. Um, first, we wanted to build a home for the Spry Fox Bears. Millions of people have played these characters, and they absolutely adore them. But we've never really had a chance to build out the world in which they live. Second, and probably more importantly, to be quite honest, is we wanted to build something that was positive. Something that we could maybe counteract a lot of the really horrendous negativity that's been swirling around the world lately. So we started dreaming. What if we could build a nice gaming community? What if we could make a game where everyone is encouraged to be helpful, friendly, and inclusive? So we've been working on a big, beautiful game that does just that. We call it Beartopia. Beartopia is an honest-to-goodness game. Uh, many VR experiences end up being these sort of short demos. Um, in Beartopia, you play in this rich, persistent world, one that you can come back to every single day. Um, Beartopia is multiplayer. Um, Everyone lives together in this amazing village, and you'll meet other players, and you'll build friendships. Um, and finally, Beartopia is completely cooperative. It is our firm belief that every single game player is an immigrant into the worlds we build, and we have a duty as creators to ensure that our virtual communities bring out the best in people. In Beartopia, all the players are immigrants to this lovely seaside village, coming there for the first time. And in this little utopia, we've set it up so that everyone can work together. Because we know that when we mix different people from all walks of life, we build strong, exciting, vibrant communities. So, Beartopia, Beartopia is something really special, and we really can't wait to share it with you. Um, here is a very brief teaser. Thank you.
Thank you, Dank. As an immigrant myself, I love that you've made this game that can put anyone in the shoes of an outsider coming to your country. Thank you for making this game. And that's just a glimpse into what's coming to Daydream and Google Play. Games are important to Google. That's why we're here at the Game Developers Conference. We understand that engagement, discovery, and high fidelity performance are important, which inspires the advancements Paul shared earlier. We're thrilled to see game developers integrate these trends into their games on Android. And Android, through Google Play, is already the world's largest platform for games. We're working to make sure it's also the best platform for games. Thank you.